Welcome back. My name is Ant Harge, and today is day 84 of 365 of studying and reading the Bible. And today we're going to be reading from Judges chapters 9 through 10. And you already know what to do. Go ahead and hit the like button so that the word of God can spread to more people. And I truly do hope that everyone is having a blessed day, evening, night, whenever you're watching this. And that God is continually blessing you and your family is covering you. And if you're going through a situation, hardship or whatever is happening, that you are letting go and letting God. You're letting God have his will. You're letting God have his way. And you're allowing God to guide you continuously, right? And that you're realizing that with God, all things are possible. And that you can cast all of your anxieties on him for he cares for you. And so I truly do hope that not only is this Bible reading an encouragement for you, but that your daily walk with God is increasing your faith ever more. But now it's time to get started. And before we do get started, let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for this divine appointment to be able to know you and your word. God, we just ask that you just, you wrap us, you protect us, you protect your people, God. God, we just ask that you give us the strength and the courage and the growth mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, God. Lord, we just ask that you protect our loved ones. You. You continuously cover them as they go through their own hardships and their own life. God, we just ask that you, you're there. You show them your warmth. You show them that you care for them and that they lean on you and not their own understanding. God, as we read your Bible, we just ask that you allow your word to come alive and ignite us, God. Allow our flame to shine bright so others can see all of your good and mighty works. This and many more blessings in Jesus name. Amen. Chapter nine is the reign of Abimelech. In verses one through five, we see that Abimelech persuades the leaders of Shechem to support him as king by reminding them of their lineage. And with their support, he murdered all of his brothers so that there would be no contest, or so he thought. Then Abimelech, the son of Jeroboam, went to Shechem, to his mother's brothers and spoke with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father. Please speak in the hearing of all the men of Shechem. Which is better for you, that all seventy of the sons of Jeroboam reign over you, or that one reign over you? Remember that I am your own flesh and bone. And his mother's brothers spoke all these words concerning him in the hearing of all the men of Shechem. And their heart was inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. So they gave him seventy shekels of silver from the temple of baal Beerith, of which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless men, and they followed him. Then he went to his father's house at Aphra and killed his brothers, the seventy sons of Jerob Baal, on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jeroboam, was left because he hid himself. In verses 6 through 21, we see that his younger brother Jotham, or Jotham, however it's pronounced, excuse me if I'm wrong, but he hides and he escapes the massacre and he warns the people of Shechem through a parable. And all the men of Shechem gathered together, all of Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king beside the terebinth tree at the pillar that was in Shechem. Now, when they told Jotham, he went and stood on top of Mount Gerizim and lifted his voice and cried out, Listen to me, you men of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees once went forth to anoint a king over them. And they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Should I cease giving my oil, with which they honor God and men, and go to sway over trees? 
Then the tree said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Should I cease my sweetness and my good fruit and go to sway over trees? Then the trees said to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Should I cease my new wine, which cheers both God and men, and go to sway over trees? Then all the trees said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, if in truth you anoint me as king over you, then come and take shelter in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if you have acted in truth and sincerity, in making Abimelech king. And if you have dealt well with Jerubbaal and his house, and have done to him as he deserves, for my father fought for you, risked his life, and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. But you have risen up against my father's house this day, and killed his seventy sons on one stone and made Abimelech, the son of his female servant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If then you have acted in truth and sincerity with Jerubbaal and with his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come from Abimelech, and devour the men of Shechem, and Beth Milo, and let fire come from the men of Shechem, and from Beth Milo, and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled. And he went to Beer, and dwelt there, for fear of Abimelech his brother. After Abimelech had reigned over Israel three years, God sent a spirit of ill will between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the crime done to the seventy sons of Jeroboam might be settled, and their blood be laid on Abimelech their brother, who killed them, and on the men of Shechem who aided him in the killing of his brothers. And the men of Shechem set men in ambush against him, on the tops of the mountains, and they robbed all who passed by them along that way. And it was told Abimelech. Now Gael, the son of Ebed, came with his brothers and went over to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. So they went out into the fields and gathered grapes from their vineyards and trod them and made merry. And they went into the house of their god, and ate and drank, and cursed Abimelech. Then Gael, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech, and who is Shechem, that we should serve him? Is he not the son of Jeroboam, and is not Zebel his officer? Serve the men of Hamar, the father of Shechem. But why should we serve him, if only this people were under my authority? Then I would remove Abimelech. So he said to Abimelech, Increase your army and come out. When Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gael, the son of Ebed, his anger was aroused. And he sent messengers to Abimelech secretly. Take note, Gael, the son of Ebed, and his brothers have come to Shechem. And here they are, fortifying the city against you. Now therefore, get up by night, you and the people who are with you, and lie and wait in the field. And it shall be, as soon as the sun is up in the morning, 
that you shall rise early and rush upon the city. And when he and the people who are with him come out against you, you may then do to them as you find opportunity. So Abimelech and all the people who were with him rose by night and lay in wait against Shechem in four companies. When Gael, the son of Ebed, went out and stood in the entrance to the city gate, Abimelech and the people who were with him rose from lying in wait. And when Gael saw the people, he said to Zebel, Look! People are coming down from the tops of the mountains. You see the shadows of the mountains as if they were men. See! People are coming down from the center of the land. And another company is coming from the diviner's terebinth tree. Where indeed is your mouth now? With which you said, Who is Abimelech that we should serve him? Are not these the people whom you despised? Go out, if you will, and fight with them now. So Gael went out, leading the men of Shechem, and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled from him. And many fell wounded to the very entrance of the gate. Then Abimelech dwelt at a room, and Zebul drove out Gael and his brothers, so that they would not dwell in Shechem. And it came about on the next day that the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech. So he took his people, divided them into three companies, and lay in wait in the field. And he looked, and there were the people coming out of the city, and he rose against them and attacked them. Then Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood at the entrance of the gate of the city. And the other two companies rushed upon all who were in the fields and killed them. So Abimelech fought against the city all that day. He took the city and killed the people who were in it. And he demolished the city and sowed it with salt. In verses 46 through 57, we see that after three years and several victories for Abimelech, he attacks Thebes. This attack would eventually lead to his death as a woman drops a millstone on his head, crushing his skull. But his dying wish was for his armor bearer to stab him with his sword so that he would die and keep his reputation intact. Thus the Lord repaid the wickedness of Abimelech for all that he did to his brothers and his father's children. Now when all the men of the tower of Shechem had heard that, they entered the stronghold of the temple of the god Beerith. And it was told Abimelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. Then Abimelech went up to Mount Zalman, he and all the people who were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bough from the trees and took it and laid it on his shoulder. Then he said to the people who were with him, What you have seen me do, make haste and do as I have done. So each of the people likewise cut down his own bow and followed Abimelech, put them against the stronghold and set the stronghold on fire above them, so that all the people of the Tower of Shechem died, about a thousand men and women. Then Abimelech went to Thebes, and he encamped against Thebes and took it. But there was a strong tower in the city, and all the men and women, all the people of the city, fled there and shut themselves in. Then they went up to the top of the tower. So Abimelech came as far as the tower and fought against it. And he drew near the door of the tower to burn it with fire. But a certain woman dropped an upper millstone on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. <gasps> then he called quickly to the young man, his armor-bearer. Oh, draw your sword and kill me, lest men say of me, 
A woman killed him. Oh. So his young man thrust him through, and he died. Ah. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed, every man to his place. Thus God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech, which he had done to his father by killing his seventy brothers. And all the evil of the men of Shechem God returned on their own heads, and on them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerobbaal. Chapter 10 follows the consistent theme of Judges, but we also see that the Lord is tired of Israel only coming to him when they need deliverance. After Abimelech, there arose to save Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Doda, a man of Issachar. And he dwelt in Shema, in the mountains of Ephraim. He judged Israel twenty-three years, and he died and was buried in Shema. After him arose Jair, a Gileadite, and he judged Israel twenty-two years. Now he had thirty sons who rode on thirty donkeys. They also had thirty towns, which are called Havath Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Cainan. In verses 6 through 7, we see that Israel continues to play the harlot, which angers the Lord, which leads to them being oppressed for 18 years. Then the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtoreths, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the people of Ammon. From that year they harassed and oppressed the children of Israel for eighteen years, all the children of Israel who were on the other side of the Jordan in the land of the Amorites in Gilead. Moreover, the people of Ammon crossed over the Jordan to fight against Judah also, against Benjamin, and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was severely distressed. In verses 10 through 13, the Lord checks Israel when he questions them and says, Did I not deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the people of Ammon and from the Philistines? And then he says that the Lord has done all these different things, right? He's just checking them like, I have done all these things for you, yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore, I will deliver you no more. And then the Lord tells them to cry out to the gods which they have chosen. It's important that we say that because when we go back to Joshua and we reference Joshua, Joshua says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But before he says that, he allows Israel, right? And in a way, he allows them to choose who will be their God, who they choose to be their God. But as for him and his house, they will serve the Lord, right? And so we can see that they have chosen, Israel has consistently chosen to not choose the Lord, and now the Lord is not choosing them. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, We have sinned against you, because we have both forsaken our God and served the Baals. So the Lord said to the children of Israel, did I not deliver you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, and from the people of Ammon, and from the Philistines, also the Sidonians, and Amalekites, and Maonites oppressed you? And you cried out to me, and I delivered you from their hand. Yet you have forsaken me, and served other gods. Therefore, I will deliver you no more. Go and cry out to the gods which you have chosen, 
Let them deliver you in your time of distress. We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems best to you. Only deliver us this day, we pray. And despite me saying all of that, we see in verse 16 that the Lord's compassion and mercy for his children and for his people reigns supreme and that he truly does love his children. And like any good father, any good parent, you just, your heart aches, your soul aches to see them going through anything that you know that you can help them out with or that you just know that you don't want them to be going through and so he it begins and stays consistent with the cycle and with the theme of the disobedience which leads to the consequence which then eventually leads to god still bringing deliverance so they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the lord and his soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. Then the people of Ammon gathered together and encamped in Gilead. And the children of Israel assembled together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said to one another, Who is the man who will begin the fight against the people of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. You already know what time it is. I have my notes here and today I'm doing a chapter 10 breakdown. Despite all the Lord has done for Israel, they continually turn away from him generation after generation. Yet they always seem to know to cry out to him when things are rough. Unlike Israel, we have to make sure that God is our first response and not our last resort. But even deeper than that, we have to make sure that our relationship with God is not a relationship where we only go to God when things are hard and we pray to God for deliverance, for help, and to get us and see us through these things. And then we forget about him after he has delivered us from it. And then we come back to him when things are hard again, because we're gonna develop this relationship where although we may see him as our deliverer, we're not gonna see him anymore as like this any more than a fixer upper. We're not gonna truly build a relationship with God. We're just gonna use God as our scapegoat, just like Israel is doing. When Israel is going through, when they know that they have sinned and they know that they're that they're going through this oppression, this slavery, all of these hardships, this harassment, and they want these things to stop, they cry out to the Lord. And then the Lord provides his deliverance. And then immediately it says, literally the Bible will say, literally after that right the bible say after that or not too long later israel forgets about god and we see that the generations they forget all that he has done they forget all of his commandments they forget everything about god and they go worship all of these other gods little g and so we can't allow our own relationship with God to be this one where we only go to him when we need something from him. And when I say that, I'm not saying you can't go to God when you need something from God. Like he wants us to be humble enough and have the humility to ask him for help. But what I'm saying is that if we're not doing this, right? If we're not seeking him, seeking his kingdom first, right? And we're truly building a relationship with God. And the only thing that we're doing is going to him when times are hard but not when times are good. If we're not thanking God for the good times, but we're only blaming him or seeking him for when things are bad, then our relationship with God isn't the way he's intended to be. I hope this makes sense. I hope this is, I hope I'm providing some clarity here. Really, I'm tr what I'm truly trying to say is that our relationship with God can't be based on just seeking only his deliverance, but never any of his goodness, never any of his almighty works, never submitting under his will, submitting under his ways, submitting under his commandments. It's our relationship with God is to be obedient. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, then keep my commandments. So if we are to love God, we are to be obedient to God. And right now, Israel, his chosen people are not being obedient. And so, what I would love for us to do is just to make sure that our relationship with God is one of obedience and true love and compassion for all that God brings, all that God is, and all that God has done for us.
But that's all for day 84. And if this was a blessing to you, then go ahead and share this with three other people who need to hear this too. And if you're ready for the next reading, I'll meet you there.